this, this is ruining my life. This book ruined me. Every page of this book was like, finish him. And it did, it finished me. And when I finished this book, I was finished, y'all. So it's safe to say that I was today years old when I realized that black people actually write science fiction. When I think science fiction, I think spaceships, I think lightsabers, I think all sorts of weird stuff happening off the planet or some type of apocalypto foolishness happening on Earth. I did not, uh, what happened in this book? This book pretty much follows an African goddess named Anyanwu, who is pretty much a generational mother to many tribes and people in Africa. She is 300 something years old. She comes from a long line of uh, black powerful women who have these magical powers. And, and Yanwu is living her best life out here helping her villagers. She's being worshiped. However, anyone who does have power or some type of uh, divinity from God, a lot of people ain't liking that shit. A lot of people are just like, you know what? I don't like that you have magic. I don't like that you're powerful. I'm actually afraid of you and you need to not stay in the village. You need to be on the outskirts where we can come to you. Don't come to us. <sighs> Society. One night while Anyanwu was living her best life, comes out of the forest this man named Doro, who himself is also a god of sorts. And he pretty much is fascinated by her because her magic drew him from across countries to her. They pretty much were connected by some invisible link of magic. Doro has the power to inhabit different bodies. He is an entity that is immortal. With the touch of a hand, he can transfer his spirit or his soul into other bodies. Unfortunately, when he does transfer into these bodies, the soul of the original inhabitant is pushed out forever. This person is now dead and Doro has taken their body. Doro pretty much tells Anyanwu, hey, I'm fascinated by you. I have these different places in America or the West where I have built groups of gifted people such as yourself and I want you to come back with me and have you be a part of this. And Yanwu pretty much spent 300 years with Doro out of curiosity of what it would be like to spend her life with someone who is immortal like herself, with someone who also has magic powers like she does. She was very curious of what life would be like with someone like her. However, Doro is a monster <sighs> doing crazy stuff. Like he has them breeding, he'll have a psychic breed with a shapeshifter, or he'll have someone that can control weather, breed with a necromancer. And mind you, many of these people are his own children. Even though he cannot produce children because he's a spirit, he utilizes the bodies that he takes and then produces more gifted people through those bodies because he jumps into gifted bodies but cannot use the gifted powers it's really too much and it just pulls on this notion that a man with such power is very hard to touch especially to touch his heart to help him understand that you have all these amazing people and greed is taking over your mission to find something beautiful in life found in Yanwu and she is really that side of him that is compassionate. She cares for all of these people. She wants them to actually live in harmony because they have these gifts and try to change the world. Unfortunately, Doro has nothing to do with that. He's not trying to change the world. He's trying to create his own world. And he pretty much keeps Anyanwu with him because of fear. He says, if you leave, I'll kill your family. If you leave, I'll kill these people. You can never run away from me for too long because I'm everywhere and I can find you. Toxic, toxic, toxic. To the point where she had to spend at least 150 years in the form of a dolphin so that she could stay away from him. 
anyone who is triggered by a lengthy, unfortunate story, this is not for you. This did not put me in the mind frame of science fiction. This put me in the mind frame of a dark fantasy, a dark historical fantasy. There's a lot of slavery going on, a lot of abuse. People are being branded. People are being shipped all over. People are dying. People are being ripped apart. There is a lot of violence, a lot of love triangles, weird foolery going. It, it, <sighs> it's a lot. This is my first read with Octavia Butler. I will say I love dark fantasy. I love dark stories because I do feel like there are things that we need to pull from those stories that can help us in our dark situations. This was just... <sighs> so while Seed was amazing, it was hard to read because I was just unaware of what I was getting into, but it definitely ruined me. And if you are willing to be ruined as well, read Wild Seed.